Hey, Phoebe, how you doing? I've got your post up right here. And let's go ahead and jump over and take a look. So um, the, the, the post itself has a lot of missing requirements. So I want to jump over to the, the uh, instructions miles, the um, uh, instructions page and objectives page. And that's week five mile, uh, final project part one, Nobel Prize poster research and thumbnails first iteration. Wow, that's a mouthful. Anyways, that's the page I'm on. And I want to jump down here and I want to take a look at this. This is milestone. So this is what's due during week five. So you're going to research your laureate and provide their name, which you have done that, and your bi biography paragraphs. We've got that as well. And you've also included the, the photo. What we don't have is your timeline information. And I, and I know you said that in your, your post, but, but that's imperative. We have to have that information. Then we also, of course, we need these sketches. So it says create several thumbnail sketches with various layouts for both the front and the back. So it says create several sketches. So what does that mean? I mean, that can be interpreted in a few different ways, right? What it doesn't mean is one and it doesn't mean two, right? But several could be interpreted as three or more. So I'm gonna look for at least three sketches of both front and back. So the first set of sketches would have the front of the poster and the back of the poster. The second set of the sketches of the, um, the second set of sketches would have the front and the back set uh, of the poster. Uh, for the second example and the third example would have sketches for the front and the back posters for a total of six sketches depicting the front of three posters and the backs of the of, of three different posters right so we got to get those sketches down now um you have some things here that are in place but you really really want to take a look at this in, in the instructions area as well so let's go ahead and take a look real quick your mission is to design the, the poster right first you must announce who the poster who the person is the laureate in some typographic design and you've done that you've introduced that your your laureate here in a typographic design but this is really really difficult to read almost impossible you have to kind of really sound it out you look at it go what does that have to do with that and then d-o-r-o -O, okay and then t-a so it's not readable or legible and i'm using those terms um at, in their a capacity as we have learned them defined within this class Okay, so these are, are, by those definitions, are neither readable nor legible. So you would want to reconsider that. Um, so right now you've just gone straight to your digital, one digital mock-up, and there is no sketches at all. So I, I really, really want you to, to submit these sketches so you can uh, develop these studies and start to, to think about creating meaning through typographic um, and it's the kind of visual correspondence techniques that have, were covered in this in this week's lectures in this week's class, and I'll go over that more in a little bit. But at any rate, let's get back here. What do we have? What do we have? So on the front of the poster, we need the laureate's name and some sort of a tagline. Okay, now you have that. You've got the name and the tagline. Let's go. Um, the bio information appears on the back of the poster. Timeline on the back of the poster. Um, photographic imagery, only the uh, bio image, and that's the only image allowed. That's the only photographic imagery allowed is in, in the image, and that's in the back of the poster. So this wouldn't, this image wouldn't be allowed. Okay, so remember, you want all, you want to create all your meaning typographically. So you you really want to take, be careful with, uh, with including any other uh, information, because as we have learned, everything you place on the page creates meaning, and that meaning should all be connected. Right now, there's no feasible connection between the background and the typography and the message making, making therein. So, um, just to reinforce, there is no t um, imagery allowed on the front of the poster. Um, Okay, so that's what we're looking for for your submission. It's three sets of sketches front and back following these instruction guidelines and uh, adhering to this, um, the parameters of milestone uh, week five uh, parts one and two. Okay, so there's a few things in the class I want to draw your attention to that will help you compile your sketches. The first is the lecture itself. And that's this week five presentation, the typographic message, evocative typography, sign symbols, and semiotics. And read this, this lecture. This is a great lecture. And then there's some great examples here. But what I'm really getting at is this right here. These are, uh, I kind of include all of these techniques in one kind of all-encompassing term that I refer to as visual correspondence. And basically that would be uh, meaning any of these, right? So creating visual correspondence is, is no, to a very high not. degree gonna determine the success of this poster. So this right here, things like this, so you take the X and you pull it out and you create something that creates an idea 
This would be considered typographic, even though there's a little illustration here, it's still a typographic solution. So something like that would be perfectly acceptable. When you're going through this presentation, be sure to click this I, this little I button right here that really describes each of these different techniques and then shows the example. And then the little arrows to the right go to different examples where you can look at those and then click the I to try to find, to, to see what uh, the description of the technique being used. So you definitely want to go through that a few times. Another area I want to draw your attention to is the announcements area in the classroom. Welcome to week five. And as you can see, we do have a, a, a number of very, very effective examples um, demonstrating this kind of visual correspondence that we've been talking about, right? So take a look at each one of these. And really while you're studying, just think about how you can employ a lot of these techniques in your own work. All right, and these are just fantastic, just wonderful examples. Then we get down to the bottom of the page, and we've, I've got some examples here from very, very successful um, posters from previous students. These would be considered to be high, very high A work. Okay, let's go through these real quick. The first one, okay, so this is an illustration, right? But it's replacing the um, note, this is called visual substitution. Okay, it's replacing the O in Tony. So this would be considered a typographic solution. So this is perfectly acceptable. Now, if there were an, were an O here and this illustration were placed over here, it wouldn't necessarily be very effective because you're, you're not using typography to create your message and that's what we're after. Okay, so try to keep all, everything typographic. Okay, and then we take this idea right here, right, the illustration, and we kind of continue that onto the back of the poster to create the timeline. So you've got a high degree of cohesion and conceptual likeness from the front to the back of the poster. And the second uh, poster, it's a little bit of a different approach, but this designer created this little pattern they placed in the typography for the name of their laureate. Okay, so we've got the headline, I'm sorry, the name, and then the subhead. And we go over to the back of the poster and we the, the viewer immediately sees this pattern being repeated, which creates via continuation a very interesting uh, connection between the front and the back. More importantly, the viewer then looks at the image or looks at the image and says, wait a second, that pattern is directly from her outfit, which she was known for that this tradi traditional Pakistani dress, which, which um, employs these, these high... Um, high uh, vibrancy colors and patterns, okay? So now we can see how there's been a connection and meaning is being made by the relationship and the development of the image as it pertains to the laureate and creating meaning by using something that's already here. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's a wonderful, wonderful example. Over here, this, this is a really fantastic example, and this would be an example of, uh, it could be uh, considered a transformation, and it also could be considered visual substitution. Basically what happens here is this view, this designer decided to substitute or replace the E in Luther with an equal sign, depicting and creating meaning. And the meaning is created typographically. That's very, very important to understand. Now the meaning here is equality, right? So this little typographic composition here is giving Martin Luther's king, King's name and also adding additional meaning saying, okay, there's an equal sign, so this is equating Martin Luther King with equality, right? And that's what he was all about, so that's beautiful. But to take it a step further, this designer has taken that equal sign, brought it to the back of the poster to create the timeline. Okay, so you can see how effective. These are just fantastic examples. Here's another one. This is a really good one, malaria. And see how the little X, the, the prescription for R and malaria, and then also the little dot. That dot comes into play. That's a tittle, if you remember. So this is a typographic solution. That's a tittle. The dot over an I is called a tittle. So that's changed colors and enlarged. Why? because it, it transposes to the back of the poster to act as the, tr the timeline. So we have this wonderful relationship between the front and the back of the poster where meaning is created in the front of the poster and may be developed in the back of the poster. Okay, important, important stuff. All right, so at this point, what I'd like to see is your sketches. I'd like to see you submit your sketches and um, <clears throat> 
and really, really follow these instructions as, as tightly as possible. All right, 10 minutes. I think I've, I, that's about long enough, right? So let's go ahead and, and, and at this point, I just want to say, if you have any questions at all, get with me immediately because it's really, really important that, that uh, we get through this and really understand the objectives and the outcomes, uh, expectations of this, this project and, and understand the relationship between type and image using typography with the characteristics and attributes of the associated imagery to help create meaning via visual correspondence using your typography. If anything I've said in this video doesn't make sense, please let me know. I'll be glad to clarify because this is all terribly important stuff. All right. Um, so, again, the most important thing at this point is to just let me know if you have any questions at all. Please get with me as soon as possible. All right. Thank you very much.